so while he's got a lot of things to say about Ed Sheeran really, recently, not recently, but you know, a long, a while ago, I'll say. And some of the comments that he's made about Ed Sheeran have been, you know, there's some valid criticism in there, but I don't know, man. I'm looking at the comments that he makes. I'm just a little bit perturbed by it all. Um, it seems as if Wiley has essentially pissed off with Ed Sheeran because he feels as if Ed Sheeran owes him a verse or owes him something because he was able to give him one thing and Ed Sheeran didn't, was able to, wasn't able to reciprocate it on that regard. Um, but let's see if I can get this video up. It's a video that he basically goes at Ed Sheeran for the most part. Where is it? Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, it's, it's an interview. Okay, it's an interview that he does with um this this lady called A Dot on one BBC One Extra, and essentially it kind of stems from Wiley feeling as if Ed Sheeran hasn't been um receptive rec- rec- receptive or you know there's you know there's a sort of thing in music where you give someone a verse they give you one a verse back. But it just seems as if Wiley's in a position where, in my opinion, I think he he's, has to maybe come to a realisation that he isn't necessarily, um, what do you call it? Not PG friendly, but he's not brand friendly for someone like Ed Sheeran, right? Ed Sheeran's probably in a far better place to probably lend a hand to Wiley than Wiley to lend a hand to him. Um, you know, because for the most part, if Ed Sheeran jumps on a Wiley track, and Ed Sheeran doesn't promote it, none of Ed Sheeran's fans will ever hear it, right? That's the reason why some, I think, some of the UK grime artists, some of the UK rap artists get annoyed with some of the US artists that they collaborate with because for the most part, if they collaborate with a little baby or a gunner or a future or whatever, and they don't promote it on their side of the pond, no one will ever find out that they did a collaboration together, right? So you have to sometimes, I think, come to realization when you're an artist or a musician, I know I have when I'm doing my DJ stuff, you have to maybe understand where you fall in the pecking order of things and I think Wiley has kind of maybe incorrectly assumed that he falls high in the pecking order. He maybe has a bigger draw than maybe what he does have. And I think a lot of it as well isn't necessarily just that. I think there's a lot of baggage involved in it that we don't necessarily know a lot about, that we're not really privy to. Um, but yeah, it, do, it does seem that a lot of it has come from that sort of like anger, that sort of frustration. And you can feel it. You can completely understand where why that would come from. Imagine being a Wiley. And he supported this kind, of, this dude from the beginning, right? And you've been kind of, you know, supporting him, backing him, and you kind of thought he might be a culture vulture, but you're gonna stand next to him. You're gonna make sure that he kind of, you know, is in the right places or does the right things or is seen with the right people. You know, you're gonna kind of vouch for him, and then suddenly when it comes your turn to kind of ask for a favor back, it kind of goes all tits up. And that's essentially why I've kind of always ascribed to the notion or to the point of view that you shouldn't really expect anything from anyone. I don't think you should expect people to reciprocate things to well yeah to maybe repay a favor i think you should just do things without expecting to get paid back just to do things from the bottom of your heart because you're just a nice guy or a nice girl i think that way you'll be able to kind of navigate through life better and able to kind of withstand some of the pelts of some of the kind of arrows that will come through your heart once you're kind of going through things because the realization that sometimes some people are going to be dicks and they won't kind of reciprocate anything back to you is something that's going to be brutal to kind of feel by and large um i'll play a little bit of the interview here just because you know it's interesting to hear kind of wiley um losing his shit but here's 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 some here's some of the interview i'll play now let's see it I don't necessarily have an issue that I don't think. I think there's, this has always happened. This always existed in music, right? There's always been a person that the press is or the media has kind of lumped these weird titles on that don't necessarily represent the entire, um, you know, breadth of a scene, right? There's been someone they've picked out who's kind of been the most corny. When there was a time and period where people were very against the whole fact that Stormzy was being, um, you know, thrust upon 
the the front of the queue has been kind of the, the kind of go-to grime guy now he's kind of you know it, the narrative has kind of changed around Stormzy over the last, last couple of years and that but that was a that was a conversation too that happened quite recently so I think that's always kind of happened I think the the success of the scene so far that I've kind of noticed from the outside looking in has been that so far no one's necessarily been chasing this um commercial or mainstream uh, appeal people have been really appealing to their base which has been awesome you see people even like the the young ads and all those kind of dudes coming up even m honcho they've been specifically just directing all their attention to the people that actually like them or that actually follow their music not caring anything about people that don't fall outside that re remit and then what ends up happening is that you end up seeing when you go on social media or you end up seeing when they repost people that have been posting their st songs or things that they like about the album you go in their profile pictures and you see that these are kids that necessarily aren't necessarily from urban areas aren't necessarily from ghettos aren't necessarily from the road they're kids that are from outside of big metropolitan cities who are kind of identifying with music because it's something that they can identify because it's something from the uk and it's something corn's cool interesting and of course, if you're a kid from the suburbs, the one thing that you're going to be interested in is a thing that doesn't necessarily talk to you at all, right? Because you, you want to be part of that core cool thing. But the moment it becomes mainstream, the moment it becomes pop, the moment your grime artist is standing next to Harry Styles at an award ceremony is a moment you've kind of, your artistry or the um, the thing that makes it interesting has kind of lost its kind of sheen, right? And that's not to say Harry Styles isn't interesting, but he occupies a different sort of level, a different sort of playing field. And what you want from the scene overall is that for the most of the core of the scene is to only appeal to their main bases. And so that's what most people are doing. So I think for Wiley, I think he's in a position where, personally, maybe speaking from the outside, he's probably at a situation where he's kind of bemoaning the fact that he's so influential. He's such a big force in the industry, such a big force in the scene from inspiration from artists and what he's done in terms of just just everything in general. Right? I'm sure most people would say they are inspired by what Wiley has done in the past, what he's done nowadays. But he doesn't necessarily see in that being replicated or being respected in the commercial side of things. He, he's, his influence isn't as far reaching as it should be. His success isn't as big as it should be. And that kind of would make you feel a bit resentful. But to kind of label Ed Sheeran and Drake a culture vulture, I don't necessarily think it's true. I don't. I, I think for as much as people like to say Ed Sheeran might be a culture vulture, I don't think he really has that much to gain out of associating himself with grime, associating himself with people from the road. I think they... Ha those artists have more to gain by having him next to by having Ed Sheeran next to them as opposed to the other way around. Um, I think with Drake's the same thing was going on there too. I think of course Drake has been maybe strategically clever in terms of positioning himself as the kind of de facto guy that is really into music and supporting people. Right, I saw him recently on the stage, recently just on the side of the stage, um, you know, vibing out to Lil Kid when he's performing at some show somewhere. He went and went, he went to see, to see Post Malone perform at his Toronto show. He's a, he's generally a fan of music. He'll go and see people perform. Right, he reached out to artists recently. Just reached out to Summer Walker and said he really liked her new album. So I think maybe he has been clever in that regard, but I do I do think um, over the years, I think Drake has demonstrated and proved that he's actually about this for real. He actually doesn't necessarily need to fly out however many miles it is to come to the UK to help um, you know revive uh, the Top Boy production to come to the press. You know, there's there's things that American artists used to say they would do back in the day that they'll never do, right? I don't know. Some a big artist would have probably said they would have invested into Top Boy, but they wouldn't have appeared at the press conference. At the sorry, at the um, at the premiere, right? They might have probably skyped in. There's a lot of things that US artists used to do that they used to kind of think the UK they used to regard the UK as an afterthought. But Drake kind of serves as his primary goal, right? Didn't he turn up randomly at some six seven show that time, right? Or was it Boy Better No Show and just completely duppy the dance, right? And, and I, I'm sure he didn't charge those guys for it. I'm sure he just came over just for the love because he just happened to be here anyway promoting an album, right? He's kind of very, he's very friends, he's very friendly with Semtex. Um, he just has a very big rapport. He kind of took that girl, is it Amy something or one of those girls that hip those hip hop DJs and took her on tour? Like that's all. That's not something that you do because. You feel like it's an obligation, something that you do because you want to give those people a chance. You feel as if they are, um, you feel as if those people need to be given a bigger platform. They sh they're, you feel as if these guys are really good and they should be touching more people. And you feel as if the UK music has, is really underrated. All this is malarkey and it's influences your stuff. Like that's actual comes from real love. So I don't think you could call that culture vulture. Um, but again, I just think Wiley is in a really weird position at the moment. It's just, you know, his influence is, 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 is immeasurable. 
but he probably can't see it physically, right? He doesn't see it physically because he reaches out to Ed Sheeran for a collaboration, he gets aired. He reaches out to Drake for something and he gets aired. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily seem as if the influence that he thinks he has or that we know he has is being shown in kind of a tangible way. It kind of, it feels a little bit ephemeral. It's kind of, his influence is kind of like on the forums only. It's not necessarily happening in IRL, which again, can be distressing. But I think, you know, nowadays he just needs to appeal to his base understand the position that he plays, understand where his role is in the, in the scene and just kind of do his job. But, you know, I think by and large, this is part of Wiley's rollouts, isn't it? Calling into radio stations, shouting his head off, going crazy on Instagram Live. It's just part of his kind of makeup. And I think with the advent of social media, he's kind of, it's just kind of ramped up even more. Um, but yeah, um, I don't necessarily agree. I don't think Ed or what or, or, or Drake is our culture vulture. I don't necessarily see that at all in, in, in my in my summation. But again, I don't have inside information. I don't know what's happening. Um, while he has got a new album coming out very, very soon. So maybe this is part of the reason why he's saying all this stuff. Um, but let's see. Let's wait and see. Wait and see what happens. Um, hopefully we get um, some music from him in the near future. And that will hopefully kind of silence um, himself or, si- not silence, or silence the critics and allow him to kind of get back onto the place he wanted to be on. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I just think it's a, such a bad situation to be in for all involved. And I hope he's able to kind of realise that, you know, his influence is there, man. We all love him for what he's done. You don't need to get validation from Ed Sheeran or these kind of dudes, man. We don't need that. Or you don't need that, you know what I mean?